Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your favorite introvert here, and today we're going to be talking about the DJI Spark, more specifically the IMU calibration of the Spark. You shouldn't have to calibrate the IMU often. It would be a good idea to recalibrate only if you were to crash and your Spark is unstable, or you were just getting the Spark and you have initially taken it out of the box for setup. Also, for me, I like to recalibrate all the sensors after a firmware update which DJI has recently pushed out. Now, that is not specified by DJI, but is something that I like to do for peace of mind prior to flying for the first time after an update. The calibration takes about five minutes from start to finish, so let's get into it. First, we want to start off on a level, dry, and stable surface to prevent any chance of a faulty calibration. Here I have laid out some levels on my island in the house to ensure it's level. If you don't have a physical level, you can always download an app for your phone or tablet and use it instead. I just chose the first one that came up in search, but you can choose whichever one you would like. Now that we know our platform is level and stable, let's ensure the Spark is ready for calibration. The only thing the Spark really needs in preparation for IMU calibration is to remove the blades from all four corners. This ensures the Spark will get the proper angles for calibration as well as a safety measure just in case the spark develops a mind of its own. With the blades now removed, we can start to connect the spark via remote control or phone using the DJI Go4 app. If this is your first time turning the spark on, the initial setup process will walk you through this. If you are coming back for a second go at calibration, you can select the three dots at the upper right hand corner of the screen, go into general settings, select the drone icon upper left, and go into main controller settings. From here, you will see the selection for sensors. Tap the sensor button and it will take you into the IMU and Compass sensor screen. I'll be doing a similar video on compass calibration and we'll link it in this video once it's uploaded. Now that we have opened up the IMU sensor screen, we can select the option to calibrate IMU about three quarters of the way down the screen. The first orientation of calibration is the normal flat and level stance the spark would have prior to takeoff. The calibration will take a few seconds and there's two ways you'll be able to tell once that particular orientation is complete. The first is by the screen on the phone or tablet. The spark will rotate orientation in the app to show the next position to place the spark for calibration. The second is by the blinking lights on the spark. During calibration, the lights on the spark will be blinking yellow. And once it's complete, the back LED lights rapidly flash green to indicate it's ready for a position change. There are five rotations to be performed, flat, on its sides in both directions, vertical, and upside down. Once these have been completed, the calibration process is complete and the app asks you to restart the spark. And just like that, the IMU calibration is over quickly and painlessly. If you run into any type of hangups, don't worry, reset and try again. If it continues to fail, go over all the settings and verify there's no severe angle or interference around. And if all else fails, go ahead and contact DJI support. And now for the fun stuff. An inertial measurement unit, IMU, 
is an electronic device that measures and reports a body's specific force, angular rate, and sometimes the magnetic field surrounding the body, using a combination of accelerometers and gyroscopes, sometimes as magnetometers. IMUs are typically used to maneuver aircraft including unmanned aerial vehicles, among many others, and spacecraft including satellites and landers. Recent developments allow for the production of IMU-enabled GPS devices. An IMU allows a GPS receiver to work when GPS signals are unavailable, such as in tunnels, inside buildings, or when electrical interference is present. An inertial measurement unit works by detecting linear acceleration using one or more accelerometers and rotational rate using one or more gyroscopes. Some also include a magnetometer, which is commonly used as a heading reference. Typical configurations contain one accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer per axis for each of the three vehicle's axes, pitch, roll, and yaw. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe for more content. We'll see you next video.